Hi there! In our previous lesson, we talked about the use of graphs to describe motion. In this video, we will learn about the different types of waves and their characteristics. So, let's get started! Sound waves, visible light waves, radio waves, microwaves, water waves, waves on a string, and slinky waves are just a few of the examples of our daily encounters with waves. Waves are everywhere. Whether we recognize it or not, we encounter waves on a daily basis. So, what is a wave? A wave is a disturbance that carries energy through matter or space. A medium is the matter through which a wave travels. In the case of a water wave in the ocean, the medium through which the wave travels is the ocean water. Waves come in several shapes and forms. While all waves share some basic characteristics and behaviors, some waves can be differentiated from others based on some observable and non-observable characteristics. One way to categorize waves is on the basis of their ability or inability to transmit energy through a vacuum. Categorizing waves on this basis leads to two notable categories, electromagnetic waves and mechanical waves. An electromagnetic wave is a wave that is capable of transmitting its energy through a vacuum or empty space. Electromagnetic waves are produced by the vibration of charged particles. All light waves are examples of electromagnetic waves. On the other hand, mechanical wave is a wave that is not capable of transmitting its energy through a vacuum. Mechanical waves require a medium in order to transport their energy from one location to another. A sound wave is an example of a mechanical wave. Another way to categorize waves is on the basis of the direction of movement of the individual particles of the medium relative to the direction that the waves travel. Categorizing waves on this basis leads to three notable categories, transverse waves, longitudinal waves, and surface waves. A transverse wave is a wave in which particles of the medium move in a direction perpendicular to the direction that the wave moves. Suppose that a slinky is stretched out in a horizontal direction across the classroom and that a pulse is introduced into the slinky on the left end by vibrating the first coil up and down. Energy will begin to be transported through the slinky from left to right. As the energy is transported from left to right, the individual coils of the medium will be displaced upwards and downwards. In this case, the particles of the medium move perpendicular to the direction that the pulse moves. Transverse waves are always characterized by particle motion being perpendicular to wave motion. A longitudinal wave is a wave in which particles of the medium move in a direction parallel to the direction that the wave moves. Suppose that a slinky is stretched out in a horizontal direction across the classroom and that a pulse is introduced into the slinky on the left end by vibrating the first coil left and right. Energy will begin to be transported through the slinky from left to right. As the energy is transported from left to right, the individual coils of the medium will be displaced leftwards and rightwards. In this case, the particles of the medium move parallel to the direction that the pulse moves. Longitudinal waves are always characterized by particle motion being parallel to wave motion. A surface wave is a wave in which particles of the medium undergo a circular motion. Surface waves are neither longitudinal nor transverse. In longitudinal and transverse waves, all the particles in the entire bulk of the medium move in a parallel and a perpendicular direction, respectively, relative to the direction of energy transport. In a surface wave, it is only the particles at the surface of the medium that undergo the circular motion. The motion of particles tend to decrease as one proceeds further from the surface. 
Take a look at this diagram of a transverse wave. The dashed line drawn through the center of the diagram represents the equilibrium of rest position of the string. This is the position that the string would assume if there were no disturbance moving through it. Once a disturbance is introduced into the string, the particles of the string begin to vibrate upwards and downwards. At any given moment in time, a particle on the medium could be above or below the rest position. The crest of a wave is the point on the medium that exhibits the maximum amount of positive or upward displacement from the rest position. Points A, E, and H on the diagram represents the crest of this wave. The trough of a wave is the point on the medium that exhibits the maximum amount of negative or downward displacement from the rest position. Points C, F, and J on the diagram represent the troughs of this wave. In a longitudinal wave, because the coils of the slinky are vibrating longitudinally, there are regions where they become pressed together and other regions where they are spread apart. A region where the coils are pressed together in a small amount of space is known as a compression. A compression is a point on a medium through which a longitudinal wave is traveling that has the maximum density. Points A and C on the diagram represent compressions. A region where the coils are spread apart, thus maximizing the distance between coils, is known as a rarefaction. A rarefaction is a point on a medium through which a longitudinal wave is traveling that has the minimum density. Points B and D represent rarefactions. While a transverse wave has an alternating pattern of crests and troughs, a longitudinal wave has an alternating pattern of compressions and rarefactions. Several quantities can be used to describe a traveling wave. The wavelength is the length of one complete wave that can be measured as the distance from a crest to the next crest or from a trough to the next trough. The amplitude refers to the maximum height of a particle on the medium from its rest position. It is the distance from the rest position to crest or trough. The period is the time to make one complete cycle and is the reciprocal of frequency. Thus, period is equals 1 over frequency. It is measured in seconds. Frequency refers to the number of crests or waves that pass a fixed point per second. 1 hertz is equal to 1 wave per second. The formula for frequency is the inverse of the period. It is measured in Hertz, named after German physicist Heinrich Hertz. Wave speed is the distance a wave travels in a given amount of time, and is equal to wavelength multiplied by its frequency. The SI unit for wave speed is meter per second. Sound is part of our everyday sensory experience. Just as we have eyes for the detection of light and color, we are equipped with ears for the detection of sound. We seldom take the time to ponder the characteristics and behaviors of sound and the mechanisms by which sounds are produced, propagated, and detected. The basis for an understanding of sound, music, and hearing is the physics of waves. Sound is a wave that is created by vibrating objects and propagated through a medium from one location to another. These vibrations create sound waves which move through a medium before reaching our ears. Sound waves can travel through solids, liquids, and gases, but not through a vacuum. While most sound waves that reach our ears have traveled through the air, sound travels relatively more efficiently in denser materials like solids and liquids than in gases. How do we detect sound? The ear is an amazing sound detector. It can detect sound waves over a wide range of frequencies. Signals are sent to the brain, producing the sensation of sound. Let us now consider some of the aspects of sound perception. That is, how the physical properties of sound waves are related to the mental impressions we have when we hear sound. The qualities of pitch, loudness, and timbre are used to subjectively describe sound. Pitch is the highness or lowness of sound. A high pitch sound corresponds to a high frequency sound wave, and a low pitch sound 
corresponds to a low frequency sound wave. A high frequency wave has a lot of vibrations per second, and a low frequency wave has few vibrations per second. Did you know? The human ear can only sense within the frequency range of 20 Hz to 20,000 Hz. Many animals can hear sounds that are well beyond the range of human hearing. For example, dogs can hear sounds as high as 50,000 Hz, while bats can detect as high as 100,000 Hz. Vibrational frequencies beyond 20,000 Hz are called ultrasonic frequencies, while extremely low frequencies below 20 Hz are known as infrasonic frequencies. The loudness of sound is determined mainly by the amplitude of the sound wave. The greater the amplitude of the sound wave that reaches your eardrums, the greater the perceived loudness of sound. Decibel is the unit used to measure sound intensity or loudness. We are normally exposed to a range of sounds from 0 decibel to about 120 decibel. The threshold of hearing is the sound level of the quietest sound that can be heard under ideal conditions, which is around 0 decibel. The threshold of pain is the sound level which can cause pain and damage to the ears, and is around 120 decibel. Here's a look at the varying intensity of different sounds. The timbre, or the tone color or tone quality, of a sound is used to distinguish between two different sounds that have the same pitch and loudness. This tone quality is very important, since it helps us identify what produced the sound. The tone quality of a sound depends on the waveform of the sound wave. If two sounds have different waveforms, we usually perceive different tone qualities. A note played on a violin does not sound like the same note played on a trumpet. The simplest waveform is that of a pure tone. Pure tones have a soft, pleasant tone quality. A complex tone consists of two or more simple tones. Now let's wrap things up. A wave is a disturbance that carries energy through matter or space. Categorizing waves based on their ability or inability to transmit energy through a vacuum leads to two notable categories, electromagnetic waves and mechanical waves. Categorizing waves based on the direction of movement of the individual particles of the medium relative to the direction that the waves travel leads to three notable categories, transverse waves, longitudinal waves, and surface waves. Sound is a wave that is created by vibrating objects and propagated through a medium from one location to another. The qualities of pitch, loudness, and timbre are used to subjectively describe sound. That's all for now. We will be discussing about the characteristics of light in our next video. So stay tuned! See you in our next video. And don't forget to keep your minds busy! If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and hit the notification icon for more videos like this.